Hi, I'm James Northway, Global Head of Data at Wavemaker. And today we're going to answer the number one question that clients are asking us at the moment, which is what will death of third party cookies mean for my brand and my business? Before we can understand uh, what's happening with third party cookies, I think we need to first understand what a cookie is and what it does. So uh, as I'm sure you know, a cookie is a small text file stored in your browser uh, that we use to access the internet. Most of us will have hundreds of cookies stored there. First party cookies are created and placed by the website you're browsing. That's what makes them first party. Third party cookies are created and placed by other uh, companies and vendors, mainly in the ad tech industry. And the third party cookies are the ones that are going away at the end of um, 2021. Cookies have many functions, but the ones we're most interested in are as an identifier and as a connector. So as an identifier, a cookie identifies us as a person. So for example, if someone comes to your website, a cookie is dropped or placed and allows us to um, uh, label them. And then uh, as a connector, if we want to retarget that person um, out on the internet in other uh, inventory, then the, our cookie is enabled to connect to many of the other different cookies and different ad tech systems to find that person elsewhere. So the reason that third party cookies are dying is that Chrome is switching them off within the Chrome browser at the end of 2021. Um, and as Chrome accounts for uh, two thirds or the majority of web browsing globally, that decision is a, basically a decision for the internet as a whole. And Safari has also um, said they are going to follow Chrome in terms of what they're doing in that space. So it's important to understand what's driving this decision so we can better plan for the future. Um, so three things, I think. Number one, cookies are effectively old and now out of date technology. Uh, first deployed in 1994, they're rapidly becoming unfit for purpose as people now own multiple devices with uh, multiple browsers within them. And the use of cookie less technology is, is growing and growing. For example, the use of connected TVs. Point two. Um, increasing consumer understanding and focus on privacy and the control of personal data has changed consumers' attitudes and expectations around how um, the industry, but also the brands that they work with, use and store their data. And in many cases, regulation has followed these trends, most notably um, GDPR, of course, in Europe and CCPA uh, in, the, in the US. Thirdly and finally, um, there's brand positioning going on as well. Um, both Google and especially Apple moving to become more privacy um, compliant and build uh, brand reputation around privacy and consumer control of data. So, so those three things working together have basically led to this big change. So as cookies are so critical to advertising technology, their removal will have a significant impact on what we do. Our ability to control reach and frequency, the way we measure and evaluate, the availability and use of third party data, DMP technology, biddable technology, and even publishers business models are likely to be affected. But it's important to um, remember that not everything will be impacted. So um, site level technology is the least affected. So site analytics, site personalization, uh, content management systems, uh, search particularly, um, and wall gardens, of course, so the likes of Facebook, Amazon and Google will see much lower impacts. And the impact isn't exactly the same in every market globally. Um, for example, uh, China, where the vast majority of digital activity is actually within an app or an ecosystem, you know, for example, like WeChat will be um, less impacted. So within all this disruption and change, by far the biggest unknown exactly how the new Chrome browser will work and which advertising functionalities it will continue to support. At the very least, it seems likely that some form of uh, retargeting and reach and frequency control will be built into the new browser. Um, but without doubt, there will be some big changes with a movement away from individual level personalization towards cohorts or segments of people that we would target. So if our ability to target and measure is going to be compromised, what are the mitigators or substitutes likely to be? Um, now, many solutions are being talked about, but the two that stick out um, are contextual and the use of first party data. So let's talk about those two briefly. Contextual targeting uses information about the page rather than the person actually reading it to allow the customization or inference about the audience uh, and doesn't use cookies. So by looking at what's on the page and using some smart analytics, we are enabled us to customize the message 
or in fact select whether we want to bid or not uh, on that impression. First party data and especially non-cookie identifiers such as email addresses, phone numbers or other persistent IDs uh, uh, can also be a solution. But not all brands and sectors sell direct or maintain CRM programs and therefore do not have natural organic access to first party PIA data. Remember also when thinking about whether to collect more um, first party data, it's really important to make sure that we build in um, the right levels of permissions, both legally but also to enable us to um, use the data in the ways that we want to within marketing. So what will digital advertising look like in 2022? It's clear that some of the many ad tech vendors uh, that use cookies will disappear from the scene, while walled gardens with logins or registrations will definitely gain an advantage. It's likely that one-to-one -one targeted digital media will shrink and we'll be using more segment or cohort based targeting strategies often built on panels, sample data or from within the platforms themselves. The measurement and evaluation of digital will definitely need to change, although arguably some of the traditional metrics that maybe we've been hanging on to, like clicks or maybe some of the digital attribution modelling, has been misleading for some time and so a break will be good for everyone. As the future state is still unclear, I think it's impossible now to create a rigid transition plan. Instead, we would advise our clients to take a two-part approach. First, be really clear on current third-party cookie dependencies. What roles are they performing within your current campaigns and what proportion of your media investment is reliant on them? Second, work together with us across 2021 to test the alternatives and remain tightly connected to the browser changes that are coming in order to rapidly adapt to the opportunities that emerge. So, thanks for watching and I hope that gave you a good overview of this subject.